I was reading it last night and some of it I found really, really emotional, actually, Victoria. And um, with the first uh, appointment with the doctor mm. and when you were given this devastating diagnosis of, of breast cancer and you, you describe it in the book um, when the doctor said the word malignant, mm. you felt like it was just crushing you. Yeah, it, and it was, it was, I, you know, I knew what was coming. I mm. knew that that... You, yes, you I, said that. You, because I'm, I was young, in breast cancer terms, 46, there's nothing in my family, there's no history, and I thought there's, there's no other explanation for this. But when you hear the words, it is malignant, it was like this colossal fist crushing me. And, and, and I was sort of battered for a few seconds, and the GP was looking at me, and I, and I didn't cry or swear, or I just was just absorbing what she'd said. And then I started to ask loads of questions. And it was only when I got outside the, the, the GP room with my partner, Mark, and then I cried. Mm. And then I was cross, furious. You know, what, what's going on? I'm 46, I haven't got time to have cancer. I've just started a new TV show. Um, and it went from there. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you mentioned, Mark, and indeed your children as well, because of course, as, as everyone knows, it goes through this awful period of life. It's not just about you, mm. it affects everyone close to you. Absolutely. And, it was very difficult for, for all of the family really yeah. to come to terms I mean, with. A, there was a period of time over weeks where I was having tests and biopsies and scans and I didn't know if the breast cancer was going to kill me or not. Mm. And you are waiting to find out. So that is a really distressing time. When finally it became clear that my cancer was going to be treatable, albeit via a mastectomy and chemo and radiotherapy, then we told our children. Um, and we told them the truth and we were really low key with them and non-dramatic and said, I have breast cancer. Um, a friend of ours had had it a few years ago. They'd seen her recently. So we were able to say, and you saw Natalie at the weekend and look at her, she's alive, she's well. And that's gonna be the same for me. I've just got a few months of treatment and we'll get through it as a family. Mm -hmm. And it took, I think 24 hours for it to sink in with them. And my oldest son, who was 11 at the time, he said to me the next day, are you not angry you've got breast cancer? Because I am, which I thought was a really good question. And I said, I'm not angry because, and I explained the statistics, and I said, and I, I don't want to waste any energy on being angry. I want to focus that energy on being positive and getting on with it and getting through it. Mm -hmm. And it was off the back of the mastectomy operation that you, you were just, as you would be, uh, overwhelmed with concern as to what, what happens at the other end of this. Mm. And you wrote letters to your two boys. And I did. I, th I thought that was really difficult to read in the book as well, actually, what you put in those letters. Yeah. How, how, how do you tell them how much you love them? Yeah. And they were put aside for a little while, but you did decide recently to allow them to read the letters. Yes, I showed them. T I mean, the reason I wrote those was it was the night before the, the surgery, which was life-saving surgery. I had, I had absolute faith in the surgeon. I knew he was going to get all the cancer out. I was just worried about the anaesthetic, and I thought, what if I don't wake up, which was irrational and absurd. But... Anyway, that's how I felt. So I wrote a letter to each of my boys and I said to him, and he was really kindly humoring me. And I said to Mark, they're gonna be in the bedside drawer if anything happens, you know, obviously given to the boys. Um, and in the last few months, I have explained what, what I did and I showed them the letters and they read them and they cried and then they handed them back to me and then they ran outside and played football because mm -hmm. that's what little boys do. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, obviously the boys helped get you through this, this mm -hmm period and, and you are doing well now Victoria yeah. things are good yeah. you know it's all clear mm. life's moving on and and it, another little part of the book which I giggled at the first time you started to have an argument over something really really petty with your partner yeah. you suddenly realize oh I'm actually enjoying this yeah, because life's getting that this, is, life, this is normal yeah. life again boys were a bit naughty so it's like no you're not having any screen time Mark and I had a few crosswords about something insignificant Oh, actually, yeah, cool. Life is getting back to normal. <laughs> I'll this take is all right. this. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it. I'll this take is it. good. And so it is onwards and upwards. And as I say, the book is so brilliantly written. And it's like diary entries, yes. basically. It's you writing your diary. Yeah. And you're now almost going on the road with it as such because you're, you're speaking at various yeah. festivals across the country. Various literature festivals, get me. Uh, also, I'm having a charity book launch, which everybody's invited to. All you have to do is buy a ticket and all the proceeds go to Youth Cancer Support. It's a teen cancer charity. I'm an ambassador. And it's at the Other Palace Theatre in London. Theotherpalace.co.uk is the website. Um, and, and the message really is, depending on your diagnosis, depending on the treatment, you, you can 
you can live with cancer. It can be manageable. You can, if you want to, go to work. Mm. You can pick the children up from school, all while you're having treatment. You can get drunk with your friends. You can stay up late. You can laugh, unbelievably, when you're going through cancer. And if I can get through it, then anybody can. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Victoria. It's great to see you, actually. And, and the you. book, Dear Cancer, Love, Victoria, such an incredible read, and it's out today. Thank, thank you so you much, Christine. Thank you very much. Thank you.